Okay, so as you can see, this is what I got hooked up. I'm uh, driving, leaving out of my house now. So yeah, now that I'm at a stoplight, oh, well, here we go, we're taking off again. But you can see that my short-term fuel trims when I was at idle were at like 30%. And whenever I put the pedal to the floor, uh, the fuel trim starts to go back down to a reasonable number, no more than plus or minus uh, 10%, which is uh, where it should be. So that would indicate some kind of a vacuum leak because it's, uh, it's overcompensating at idle, but it's not overcompensating when it's running through like, you know, 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. But you see now that uh, I'm back at a stoplight again, now uh, you can see that my long-term fuel trim for bank one and for bank two, they're both at 29.6%, which seems to be the maximum. And uh, I don't know if that's like the maximum amount that uh, these injectors can compensate for. And uh, got my engine RPM pretty steady. You know, once I take off, then those numbers turn normal again. So that would indicate a vacuum leak. So as you can see here, I got my 2011 GMC Sierra and uh, it's got a uh, vacuum leak right somewhere down here. It's basically an intake manifold gasket. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling an air box, a snorkel off, and uh, disconnecting terminals going to the alternator. Going to be pulling the vacuum line going to the brake booster. Going to be disconnecting the wires going to each of the fuel injectors. Disconnect the fuel line where it connects to the fuel rail. Um, taking off my map sensor. This line for the EVAP tube and this bracket right here that holds this wire harness in place and then I'll be able to loosen the bolts that holds the intake down, pull the intake out, and uh, get that intake manifold gasket out and switched. Alrighty. So, so what kinds of interesting dialogue should we have for her mechanics YouTube channel? I don't know, but I think we should include that in the recording since I already started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, these things. Dave here decided to do his intake manifold gasket. Uh, it's down to the last couple bolts. Yeah. So far, just a quick run through. I took the snorkel off to the throttle body, disconnected the terminal for the throttle position sensor, disconnected the terminal for the map sensor, yanked the PCV tube and where it goes back down here. Uh, yanked all of the leads going to all the fuel injectors, yanked the terminal that goes to the purge valve and also the line for the purge valve that goes back to the gas tank, the fuel line as well where it connects into the fuel rail. You don't have to pull the fuel rail to get the manifold out though. They can actually stay attached. You will however also have to pull the vacuum line that goes to the brake booster and then when you reattach it be sure to reattach the terminal that goes to the valve that goes to the brake booster. So yeah and then those are your intake manifold uh, bolts. Where would be the cheapest place? <clears throat> Alright last bolt. <sighs> Oh, hey. It's loose. Hey. Look at that. Cool. All right. So now, we can, so we just want to get it where it doesn't, uh, grab the other fuel rail. Yeah.
forgot to disconnect that one. She's out. Yeah, let's see how many mouse droppings we got on top of the plenum. Not too many. Yeah. I guess these uh, little pieces of styrofoam that should be in there. Uh, I don't know. They're not in there, but either way, it kept the little mousies out. Wonder, what do you think, Charlie? Do you think if I use something like a like a green pad, like a Scotch Brite, do you think that would um, misshape the uh, mating surface for the plenum? I think you need to use a wire wheel. A wire wheel. Yep. Definitely. You don't think that would gouge it? No, not at all. Okay. Take. This yeah. is aluminum, though, right? Yeah, I mean it should be. I don't know much about vortex. Yeah, it's got to be at least. Uh, Aluminum. I can't remember if it's cast iron block aluminum heads or if it's cast iron block, or I'm sorry, aluminum block aluminum heads. Uh, maybe it's an Ecotech. Ecotech probably got the aluminum block. Yep. The, uh, the new kid in town. Yeah. All right. So I want to just show you guys real quick. This is uh, GM brand Pilates. So, uh, you know, like in, in yoga, you'll be doing the move like the plank. Well, sometimes when you need to reach all the way into an engine bay, if you have one of these, uh, like, kind of covers that goes over your radiator, you can just engage your core muscles and just kind of, you know, like that. And, and then it's a really uncomfortable position, but sometimes it's just all you got, you know. <laughs> You gotta remember to stick your tongue out too. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's like the, the what is it, the yoga thing like they do where they, you know, like, so it's something like this. And make sure you inhale deeply when you're spraying the brake cleaner. <laughs> no. There we go. 
Just climb on your truck. That's that's how you do it. Yeah. Taller steps tool instead of a milk crate wouldn't have made any sense. Yes, I know, right?